This will be the result of this video. The first part will show an animated sequence of the assembly process. The final output will combine everything into a single sheet. We finished here in the last video. You'll find the start file on the asset page of my website. Let's tidy this up before starting by first switching this editor back to a timeline. Also switch off the auto keying function here for the moment. Let's click the playhead back to the beginning. If we drag select all these objects in the timeline, we can press A to select all keyframes, then press X and delete them. Next, I'm going to select the objects I don't want, which include these annotations, but I'll leave one in the scene. Plus, select these text objects. You can leave the names on this sheet, but since they're displayed on the previous one, it's best to delete them here. Let's first come to the Output Properties tab. In here, I'm going to set the X resolution to 3840, then the Y resolution to 3240. These are the default values multiplied by 2 and 3, but you can adjust these as needed. Now let's select the camera and open the Camera Properties tab. Here we can adjust the orthographic scale until the model more or less fills the frame, while leaving a slight gap. Back in the scene, press G to frame up the model. I can select this annotation and move it away for now. Since we don't know exactly how many shots this will take, let's move the scrubber to frame 100. We can also check on auto keying again. If we drag select all these objects, we can press I and add a location, rotation and scale keyframe. Now using the left arrow key, move back one frame to 99. Then start with the top object first, press G, Z and input 600, then press enter. Since auto keying is enabled, that new position gets stored. Next, press the left arrow key again to move to frame 98. Move this object out of view using another recurring value. Press G, Z and input 5000, then press enter. The next objects will need an initial keyframe at frame 99. So move the scrubber back to 99 with the right arrow key. Select the second object we're going to move and press I to store this location. Now move to frame 98. Press G, Z, input 600 and press enter. Move the playhead to frame 97. Press G, Z, input 5000 and press enter. Let's handle the next four objects. Shift select each one, ensuring you're in the correct keyframe. Press I to store their location. Then move back one keyframe. Check on only effect locations for a moment. Press S, input 1.5, then press enter. Next, press G, Z, input 600 and press enter. Move back one frame. Now press G, Z, input 5000 and press enter. Repeat this process for the remaining objects. Store the initial value, move 600, scale 1.5, and then move 5000. I can quickly work ahead to repeat this for the remaining objects. The final object will be the concrete piece here. Repeat that process, move it up 600 first, then move it 5000 out of view. That's it for the objects. I'm also going to add annotations as each object enters the scene, along with a number tag. These just require a keyframe for the position before, during and after. I can speed up this section. Once everything is ready, let's come to the outliner. Select all the objects in the Portugal collection. Right click on the collection and select objects. This way all keyframes are available to select in the timeline. Press A to ensure they're all selected. Then press G and drag back, so the first keyframe is on frame 1. Now drag the scrubber through all the frames to ensure everything is correct. The last keyframe should be at frame 12. Let's close the end of the timeline by pressing Ctrl plus end. The next stage is to render these images. Open the Layer Properties tab and let's come down to the Thickness field. Increase this to 6 to make the lines more pronounced on the render. Now go to the Output Properties tab. From here, 
click the folder icon and find a permanent location to save your images. This is important because if you make changes to the model at any stage, you can simply overwrite these images. Using the same folder in the next stage will automatically update with the new images. Accept this location. To render the animation strip, go to the Render menu and select Render Animation. Give that a moment to complete. Once it's done, let's close this down. Instead of starting a new blend file, let's go to the Scene menu and rename this to Assembly. Then click New and choose Full Copy. We're now in Assembly.001, a full copy of the first scene. Rename the new scene to Output. In this scene, we don't need the model. Drag to select all objects, press X and delete them. Now we can switch off auto keying also. Select the camera. In the Properties tab, update the Y resolution to 2160. Back in the scene, press Alt plus R and Alt plus G to clear the rotation and location values. In the X rotation field, input 90 to set the camera upright. Now let's exit Camera View. Then move the camera back along the Y axis by pressing G, Y and drag away. Now let's return to Camera View. Then we can head to the Add menu and from here select Image and choose Mesh Plane. Then we can navigate to where we rendered our images. Select them all. Then we can import as planes. To view the images, press Z and switch to Material Preview. Give that a moment to update. The images appear dull here, so let's open the Render tab. Then we can scroll down to Color Management. Then in the View Transform, we can switch this to Raw. This will enhance the black edges. Then arrange the images in your view by pressing G to move. And let's move them up towards the top here. Then zoom into the top corner and let's align the images with the camera frame. To position the cursor, press Shift and the right mouse button and press Ctrl to snap it to the corner of the image. Now let's press the period key and switch to the 3D cursor. Zoom out and let's snap each image into position sequentially. So arrange four images along the top row. Then just continue to snap them into place. Once all images are arranged, let's select them all. Then press S and we can scale them to fit from top to bottom. The scaling is based on the position of the 3D cursor. With that complete, press F12 to render. Additional information can be added to the side. Notice that each image outline has a freestyle edge. Freestyle is enabled here, but if you don't want it, you can disable it. However, I think this looks better enabled. That's it for this video and hopefully you found it helpful.